There's no doubt that a piece of legislation like this would cause some sort of a response. Within Uganda, gay and human rights advocates were alarmed. Before the proposed legislation, many had felt a gradual easing of enforcement of laws designed to punish people for homosexual behavior. Amnesty International, however, reports that arrests of people suspected of having homosexual relations are arbitrary and detainees are subjected to torture and abuse by authorities. Within the latter part of 2009, many felt they must leave the country or go into hiding. Campia Keoma characterized the attempts to portray homosexuals as a threat to an African family as especially egregious, putting people's lives in danger. When you speak like that, Africans will fight to the death. Since April 2009, a local Ugandan newspaper printed the names of suspected homosexuals. Another printed tips on how to identify gays for the general public. Even apart from the legislation to punish homosexuals, Ugandan human rights have been a concern for Amnesty International, who highlighted issues such as threats to freedom of expression and association and the use of torture by law enforcement among their major concerns in their 2009 report. American evangelists active in Africa are being criticized for being responsible for inspiring the legislation by inciting hatred with excessive speech by comparing homosexuality to pedophilia and influencing public policy with donations from American religious organizations. American evangelicals such as Scott Lively and California Pastor Rick Warren have a history of involvement in Uganda where they focus their ministry work. As a result, Warren and others have become influential in, shaping, in the shaping of public policy in Uganda. Nigeria, and to a lesser extent, Kenya. Stephen Langa, the March 2009 workshop organizer, specifically cited an unlicensed conversation therapist named Richard Cohen, who states in a book that was given to Langa and other prominent Ugandans. Homosexuals are at least 12 times more likely to molest children than heterosexuals. Homosexual teachers are at least seven times more likely to molest a pupil. Homosexual teachers are estimated to have committed at least 25% of pupil molestation. 40% of molestation assaults were made by those who engage in homosexuality. Again, these are all statements that Richard Cohen purports in his book. These statements were based on faulty studies performed by Paul Cameron, who has been expelled from the American Psychological Association, the Canadian Psychological Association, and the American Sociological Association, and Cohen confirmed their weakness, stating that when the book will be rep reprinted, these statistics will be removed. Pam Pazuka News stated, It's worth noting that it costs a considerable amount of money, time, and processes to table a private member's bill, which begs the question of how David Bahati's bill is being financed. It also is common practice for the mushrooming pastors and churches to use homophobic at attacks on opponents as a way to discredit each other and sway faithfuls. Martin Simpa, a Ugandan pastor and former affiliate of Rick Warren, has endorsed the bill and after a period of silence and a refusal to take sides on the matter, Rick Warren himself has publicly denounced the bill, calling it unchristian. In February 2010, to counter opposition, the bill Simpa showed gay pro uh, in, I'm sorry, let me start again. In February 2010, to counter opposition to the bill, Simpa showed gay pornography to 300 members of his church in an attempt to educate his parishioners about what gays do. During March 2009, Scott Lively met with several legislators and the Minister of Ethics and Integrity, James Baturo. 
he followed his event with a post to his blog saying he was overjoyed with the results of, of their efforts and predicted confidently that in the coming weeks we would see significant improvement in the moral climate of the nation and that a massive increase in pro-family activism in every social sphere. Conference organizer Stephen Langa said that a respected observer of society in Kampala had told him that their campaign was like a nuclear bomb against the gay agenda in Uganda. I pray that this and the predictions are true, he said. However, Lively has responded to the bill saying, I agree with the general goal, but this law is far too harsh. Society should actively discourage all sex outside of marriage, and that includes homosexuality. The family is under threat. Gay people, gay people should not be parading around the streets, Lively stated. Lively has said that the bill is a reaction to attempts by Americans and Europeans to homosexualize Ugandan society. He further claimed that Ugandan leaders who created the bill are worried about the many male homosexuals coming into their country and abusing boys who are on the street. Richard Cohen has stated he condemns the bill and that the punitive measures in it are incomprehensible. Don Schmeier from Exodus International expressed his shock at the legislation, telling the New York Times that although he outlined how homosexuals could change to heterosexual in his March 2009 conference, his involvement was limited to giving seminars to Africans about better parenting skills. The bill is horrible, absolutely horrible. Some of the nicest people I have ever met are gay people, he stated. In 2009, the neighboring countries of Rwanda and Burundi also discussed legislation that would criminalize homosexuality. On December 22, 2009, several hundred people gathered in Kampala to show their support for the bill, protesting against homosexuals. The protesters led by born-again clerics, cultural leaders, and university undergraduates marched to the parliament where they present, presented a petition. On January the 11th, 2010, Uganda's Media Center, a government-sponsored website, released a statement titled, Uganda is being judged too harshly, reacting to the worldwide media attention that the country has received about the bill. When I come back, I will talk just about that, and that is the international government's response.